Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord this morning on this beautiful, warm, I know sometimes the sun can be deceiving, and when I left the house early this morning, I was braced for a cool chill, and I was very pleasantly surprised, and I got excited. It's warm. It's warm, and I'm sweating here in tunic this morning, but God is good on this May 24th weekend. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us this morning. Some brief announcements. Uh, you will see the uh, announcements are rolling before the service on the screen, so the majority of the announcements are on there. You have been emailed uh, this past week. It's on our Facebook page. Uh, if you weren't here last week, our contact uh, that's normally emailed out um, on Friday of the week uh, is now on pause until after the summer months. So uh, any pertinent things, please be uh, checking your email or checking our core uh, Facebook page. But there's a couple of things I want to point out that's coming this week, just because they don't happen every single week. Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock, our Joy uh, group will be meeting uh, in the gym. Uh, if, uh, if you're unsure what Joy is, it's just older youth. So I'm not even sure what the cutoff on that is. Uh, if you feel like you're an older youth, <laughs> you're welcome to come to Joy for some fellowship, some food, fun, thinking of another F word, but I got three, and we'll leave it at that. So it's Tuesday, what? Faith. Faith, there we go. That's Tuesday at 7 o'clock, Wednesday morning. Uh, we've started an initiative about a couple months ago. It's a coffee and conversation, Wednesdays from 9.30 a.m. until 11 a.m. That's happening this Wednesday morning. Uh, you can drop by, grab a coffee and leave, or you can come and uh, sit in, have conversation, coffee, and there's usually uh, a treat there as well, some kind of a tea biscuit or a muffin or something there. So please, uh, Wednesday morning, come along to that. A couple dates that I need you to mark in your calendar, a couple upcoming events. Uh, we will be having a summer celebration in the park, a summer celebration in the park on June 10th. That's a Saturday. June 10th is still in the planning stages of that but a lot of things are in the works for that. So that's June 10th from 2 to 4 p.m. And hopefully that'll be happening at Powers Pond Park. If you remember last fall, we tried to have one there for our rally day, and because of the cold, mozzy weather, we've decided to do it in June this year, and hopefully the weather will cooperate. Our annual VBS will be happening Pending. One person is excited. Woohoo! <laughs> Our annual v VBS happening July 17th to the 23rd. So that's a Monday to Friday from 6 p.m. to 8.15 p.m. Um, so that's for children ages. Sure. Okay. There we go. VBS is open to everybody. Whoever wants to come, and we are looking for volunteers. So if you feel that this is something that you can do, a ministry that you can participate in, please see Lisa, and she will definitely uh, put you to work somewhere. Trust me, she will put you to work. Music for Youth concert on June 11th at 6 p.m. That's a Sunday afternoon. Uh, see Aaron. Aaron is putting that together. Uh, any of our youth in our core that's taking music lessons, vocal lessons, dance lessons, why not? If you want to do a performance, see Aaron, and Aaron will definitely get you hooked up there for that for sure. Uh, there's a list of camp deadlines. If you're planning on going to any camps this summer, uh, there's deadlines to get your uh, applications and monies in for that. That's enough. Psalm 145 says this. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom.
welcome to worship this morning and we're going to stand together and we're going to sing a few choruses together and the first one we're going to sing is we bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the lord so let's stand together and praise him this morning i sing this through a couple of times <clears throat> So praise into the house of the the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord, lift up your hands in this holy place and bless the Lord and bless the Lord. quieter. Uh, Father, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify your name in all the earth.
we'll continue with the quietness this morning as we reflect and as we bow in an attitude of prayer this morning. We're going to sing the chorus in the presence of Jehovah. God Almighty, Prince of Peace, troubles vanish, hearts are mended in the presence of the King. We've already sang this morning, we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Come bless the Lord, all ye servants. And Father, we love you. Recognizing that God is here this morning through his Holy Spirit, we are in his presence. And when we bow humbly before him, many things happen. When we ask him and come boldly to that throne today, lives are changed. We are touched by his hand. His grace is amazing. We're going to sing that through probably three times this morning with the worship team in the presence of Jehovah. In the presence. storm cover me we have many people today going through those storms and just a couple of names that I have this morning and I know there are many many others we have a couple of unspoken prayer requests this morning we continue to remember Colonel Doug in these days Mildred who has to go for surgery and just waiting for that call Commissioner Floyd uh, many of you probably got the or saw on our core Facebook page the week. Colonel Floyd has been diagnosed with cancer, and uh, we pray for him and uplift him in these days. Major Phyllis at St. John's West and the passing of her dad yesterday, uh, yesterday morning. Remember the High Council that's meeting in London uh, this weekend uh, with the election of a new general of the Salvation Army. And for those who may be unaware of what that means, uh, the general is the head of the Salvation Army worldwide. And uh, currently we have General Brian Peddle and Commissioner Rosalie, uh, both Newfoundlanders, and uh, they are retiring. And the, uh, the commissioners from all across the world are meeting today in this coming week in London, England, as they prayerfully 
seek God's will and the Holy Spirit for a new general of this great, amazing Salvation Army. And there are many more today that we know on our hearts. Many people are still waiting for test results and waiting for surgeries. Some still grieving loss of loved ones. Some people just can't get there. Just can't get there. Having a hard time with life. We lift up our young people in these days, our youth, and challenges that they're facing in these days. And we pray that prayer today. Peace of God. Cover them through the storm. Cover them. Can I have the second part of that this morning? It says, only in you I am safe. In the sheltering arms of God. Only in you I'm secure. Only in you there is peace. Peace of mind, peace of heart. Peace, period. Only in him. So cover me. Let's sing that through probably a couple times this morning. And then we'll have some prayer. Worship team, please. Peace of God, cover me. bow humbly before you, thanking you for this great day that you have given us, a day where we can be free to come and to worship you in spirit and in truth, a day where we can come into this place for encouragement, to uplift each other, to pray for one another. A place where we can come in stillness Father you know the names you know each individual the names that we've listed this morning those unspoken requests those individuals that we hold close in our hearts today they're just needing strength, needing peace. Some needing hope. So we lift them all to you today. 
all those people that we hold close to us. And we lift them up to you, Father, because we believe. We know you are the great physician. We know that at the touch of your hand, Scripture tells us blinded eyes can see. Your power, your healing touch is what we seek today. We pray for peace and strength for those who are grieving today, loss of loved ones. Those who may be struggling to find sense of it all. We pray that you just wrap your arms around them. And the peace that pass, surpasses all understanding will be theirs today. Those who have received diagnosis in the last number of weeks, diagnosis that are not favorable, diagnosis that cause fear, anxiety, we pray your peace today for that, those people today. that your strength will be theirs, that they will find in you comfort, compassion, strength, and peace. May that be their portion today. For those today, Father, that just can't get there, just finding life hard, find it difficult to, for each day to just do. May you be their strength today. May they find in you the hope that they need. For our students today in schools and universities, there's just so much going on. We pray for your wisdom, your guidance, and your direction. We thank you for the opportunity of worshiping today, of coming to this place together to uplift your name, to be encouraged, and to find encouragement in others. So bless us. Continue to be with us the rest of this service today. And may we find in you all that we need. We ask in Jesus' name, giving thanks. Amen and amen. Well, as a vital part of our worship, we are now privileged to present our tithes and offerings to our Lord. There is a simple prayer that uh, someone has written. There's no person's name to it, but it says, Dear God, I want to take a minute not to ask for anything from you, but to simply say thank you for all I have. Ever so true. Ushers, please stand where you are, and we'll have a prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we are privileged once again to come to you, and we know that you're not tired of our coming. You're not tired of our offering thanks to you, because it is important for us to do that, not only today, but every day. And as we are aware of the many things that you provide for us, we are privileged people to come and to give a portion of what would you give given to us. And we know that the blessings that come to us are so many that it would take a long time for any one of us to outline all of them this morning. But as we have come today to worship one with another and to worship with you, we pray that you will bless our gathering and bless the gift and the giver this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
We're going to sing again this morning. A beautiful song. It says, Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. And Lord, I've come to know the weaknesses I see in me will be stripped away by the power of your love. The second verse says, Lord, unveil my eyes. Let me see you face to face, the knowledge of your love as you live in me. Lord, renew my mind as your will unfolds in my life, in living every day, in the power of your love. Let's stand as we sing this with the help of the band this morning. I see Miss Ophelia is coming with children's time. And I think her mom might be helping her a lot. <laughs> Bless your hearts.
Okay, do we have any kids here this morning? There's not very many people here. Anybody want to come up for children's time? Yes, I love it. Ooh, what's her, uh, is that a sloth? A seal? No, oh, that's super cute. I like that. Okay, so Ophelia, what do you want to tell people about your box here? We're going to start with the box. Okay, you can't tell the secret though, right? It's always a secret, right? Okay, so what does your box say? Hello there. Okay, so can you look at that box? It just looks like an empty box, right? It says hello there. Yeah, do you know? I'll just show it to a few people. It says hello there. Hello there. It's just a little box. A little slot on the top to put money in. Ophelia likes collecting money. She does chores. Do you do any chores? Hmm. No? You should get your mom started. She can get you some money for doing chores. Um, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Now, I gotta see. Does anybody want to give up some money? I think I have a loony here somewhere. Okay. So, you want to take your loony? Okay. So, we're going to drop this down in the top of this ordinary open box. Okay? Drop it down. Show everybody what's going to happen. <gasps> it's not in the box. So, I'm going to show you. Where'd it go? We don't know. Okay, I'm going to show you. So, where's the money? It's gone. So it went down in the top. It's just an empty box. It's gone. So, should we tell them our secret? Because you can hear it. Woo! It even <laughs> fell out. <laughs> okay, so it was in there. It didn't disappear. So what's our secret, Ophelia? Do you want to tell everyone the secret of your box? You don't remember? So what's on the bottom of your box? Uh -huh. When I drop off at the top, I kind of don't even see the money. Yeah, so the bottom of the box actually says hello there backwards. And this little part that shows it forwards is a mirror. So it makes it look like it's an empty box, but it's actually a mirror reflecting the bottom of the box. And that mirror holds a little compartment in the back. So maybe we can open it up and show everybody. Um, so it holds a little compartment in the back. So that's where the money disappears in the back. But the mirror inside, when it reflects the upside down and backwards, hello there, on the bottom, um, it makes it look the right way. So it looks like it's an empty box, but it's not. So the money hides in the back. So we thought that was super cool. Ophelia gets these little kiwi crates so that it comes with these little sciencey projects. So we did that. I would have loved to have brought her little visor thing that she had because it has a mirror on the top and you're supposed to write your name while looking in the mirror. It's really, really hard. We took some videos of me and Ophelia and Justin trying to write our names backwards. It's really hard, really confuses your brain because it's backwards and upside down. So it, I looked like I, Ophelia can write better than what I did trying to do that. So it got me thinking about the verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 12, which says, now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror, but then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. So I thought that was really cool because it is really confusing. When we look in a mirror, everything is backwards. Um, which when you're looking in the mirror and doing your hair and stuff, have you ever taken a picture afterwards and you're like, whoa, my hair doesn't, I thought my hair looked better than that. But when you take a picture, you're like, you see really how it looks. Um, so sometimes when we look in a mirror, it doesn't look that confusing, but try and do something like this and it's actually confusing. And so I love that God knows and God is not confused by anything and that God knows what's happening and that one day we are going to see everything that happens in this life clearly. And that, um, so things that happen to us now that are hard and difficult and don't make a whole lot of sense, God understands them. And we can always go to God and that one day we are going to understand it the way that God does. And it'll all be revealed to us in the way that I showed you how that works. Um, so do we have Sunday school today? Probably, yeah, probably not. I don't know. Yeah. Yo, we do. Oh, that's cool. Okay. All right. So we'll say a quick prayer. Yeah, we'll fix it after. And uh, go to Sunday school. Okay, let's see. Okay, go 
Georgia. Okay. Dear God, we thank you so much for this beautiful, sunny, long weekend um, that we have to come to your house and worship you and um, just be thankful for all of the wonderful blessings that you give us every day. And even though sometimes things are hard and sometimes things don't make sense, um, we are just so thankful that we serve a God who knows everything and has our steps planned for us and uh, your plans are good and your plans are um, perfect. And so we just ask that you will bless the kids in our church and give them strength um, to stand up for you and to trust in you even when it's hard. And bless them as they go out to Sunday school. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Happy Sunday. Thank you, Ben, for that beautiful, beautiful arrangement. Thank you to Karina for uh, covering for the dikes. Good to have the dikes back. But uh, Karina and Evan did a great job in your absence. Thank you so much. Good to have everyone here this morning. I know we're few, but we're still here, and God is blessing us on this May 24th weekend. Scripture this morning is from Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 9. Then we're going to Luke chapter 24. It is Ascension Sunday. Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 9. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. And then Luke chapter 24, verse 50. When he led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. And now Anna, oh, she's there, is going to bring to us a vote.
Beautiful, Anna. Thank you so very much. Let's pray together. Father, I pray that the words you have given me this week will speak to our hearts. Move among us, Holy Spirit. Be in our midst. May we be open to what you ask. Praying these things in thy name. Amen. 2008. That's a long time ago. Do you remember what you did in 2008? Well, I remember that we were in Bay Roberts and our family came to town for the weekend or holidays or some, we were here anyway. The girls were still very little. Jordan was two, Abby was three, Haley was nine. And mom offered us a rare night out, go on a date. So in Airport Newfoundland, we couldn't see movies in the theater very often, so we decided to go to the movies. Now, it was one of those things where you were going to the movies, not because there was a movie you wanted to see, but you just wanted to go to the movies. Anyone ever do that? Just because you want to get out. Not sure what you're going to see. So we went, and we weren't, didn't know what we were going to choose, and we were looking at, that's when the things are still on the wall. Remember the posters used to be on the wall? And we looked, and we said, oh, this one looks OK. Probably didn't even see the trailer. But this is the trailer of the movie that we watched. Here we go in five, four, three, two. Here in Salamanca, Spain, President Ashton has been working with leaders from five continents to forge a new groundbreaking alliance. Today, we make history. Shooter. There was something in that window. I saw something too. We have to respond. You can't give the order. You've been shot. We risk telling the world that you weren't really there. We weren't there. We need you to tell us what's going on. I think I just fought a guy who did it. We're shutting the city down. The NSA has just confirmed the threat. Do we know who's behind this? Don't release him. He knows something. For the moment, the Americans think they've dodged a bullet. Secret Service, we need to see your tapes. I'm in pursuit, heading west. We got a satellite lock. We're looking for five people out of six million. Surprised to see me alive? Stop. Rewind that. Oh my god. What did he see? What have you done? What have you done? The beauty of American arrogance is that they cannot imagine a world where they're not to step ahead. There's something else going on here. is in pursuit of a suspect. Get out of the way! Things can't happen. There's no 20 on the president. Where is it? Go! Go! Vantage Point, an American political action thriller. The story focuses on an, assassina an assassination attempt of the President of the United States in Spain as seen from the various vantage points of the different characters. 
Vantage point, defined as a place or position affording a good view of something. And in the movie, there are multiple eyewitness accounts of the same event, the attempted assassination of the president. Yet everyone sees it differently and recalls their unique experience. Vantage point can be loosely referred to the perspectives of the four gospels and part of the book of Acts. They're all different. Each author recalls their unique experience of the life of Jesus from their vantage point. Same story, same teaching, yet all different perspectives. All about their interpretation, their focus. Therefore, the stories of Jesus are varied, yet still very much the same. Today is Ascension Sunday, the Sunday we commemorate Jesus' ascension into heaven, 40 days after his resurrection on Easter Sunday. Yet, as I was preparing for this sermon this morning, neither gospel provided just what I needed. In fact, I had to go to the book of Acts to get the complete story, the second book written by Luke. Each gospel has a different perspective, different details of Jesus' final day on earth with his disciples. Matthew ends his book with the Great Commission and a mention of the Ascension. Mark speaks of both the Great Commission and the Ascension. Luke details both. And John speaks of neither. Finally, in Acts, there's no mention of the Great Commission, but there is the promise of the Holy Spirit, and then the ascension happens. Luke continues his story from the Gospel to the Acts. Three different vantage points of Jesus' final moments on earth, and one complete omission. Did John not think it was important? No, I don't think that's the case. It's just his focus of Jesus' life and teaching is quite different. Yet there's another omission that I wish to explore this morning as we examine the narrative of the Ascension. For a few moments, let's pretend we're on the sidelines, watching what is taking place. In Acts, Luke tells us Jesus is eating, having a meal with his disciples, and during the meal, he, calls, he gives them this command, don't leave Jerusalem anytime soon. But wait, wait for the gift my father promised you. In John 14 and 16, Jesus told them that God would give them a counselor who would be with them forever, the Holy Spirit. He continues then, John may have baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. A while later, they meet again. And this time the questions of the disciples reveal their impatience for the kingdom of Israel to be restored. They have been with Jesus for three years, always living in expectation of the Messiah returning as king and returning Israel to its place of honor and glory, a political reign. They are still thinking in earthly physical terms of Jesus dethroning the present leaders. They have been witnesses of his death and resurrection, yet they still miss the fact that his reign isn't about the earthly kingdom. It's about the heavenly one. Jesus puts them in their place mildly, and he says, guys, it's none of your concern. It's not for you to know. This is up to God the Father, and he sets that time by his authority. But let me tell you this. You will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. He will come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Then Jesus gently rises into the heavens. Now, that's Acts' story. Back to Luke's story. After Jesus gives his directive, Luke gives us more. Jesus takes the disciples to Bethany. He lifts his hands, and he blesses them. Jesus prays over them, and this is characteristic of Jesus, blessing others. But this final blessing involved God's continued power on their daily ministry in his physical absence. And as he prays over them to the Father above, Jesus ascends into heaven. In Acts, Luke adds, a cloud hid him from their sight. And with that, he is gone. A familiar story with emphasis on the Great Commission we are called to be witnesses, to share the good news of the gospel, the story of Jesus' love, life, death, 
and resurrection to others, to bring others to Christ. Kingdom building, that's a heavy task. And these followers were in the classroom with Jesus for three years. Lots of lessons, teachings, practical experiences. Yet this final lesson is quite brief. Go all over the world and tell people about me. That was it. No other instructions, no strategic plan, no further clarity of purpose. Go and tell. Today in life, everything needs a plan, does it not? I remember nursing, the nursing process. You assessed, you planned, you implemented. In business, there always needs to be a plan. And in construction, before one builds, a plan is required. Yet in this huge task put before Jesus' followers, no plan is provided. Jesus does not tell them how to do it. There are no necessary steps. Key people are not identified. He just says, you will receive the Holy Spirit and then do it. Not sure if any of these disciples experienced anxiety, but the thoughts of such an enormous task would put my anxiety levels through the roof. It just seems so daunting. I would have so many questions to ask. How? Where do we start? Is this even possible? I'm not sure I'm equipped for this. Yet none of this is recorded in any gospel. But Luke records in Acts what they did do. What do they do when they don't know what to do? They pray. The Bible indicates that the prayers of the early church were powerful because the people were of one mind. Later in this same chapter, in verses 12 to 14, it tells us they all returned to Jerusalem. They went back to where they were staying. They went back to their Airbnb, and they all joined together constantly in prayer. They had just been given the greatest task of their lives with limited insight and instructions. They just knew a spirit would descend on them at some point. But even with the Spirit, the task was still physically theirs. They realized very early that they could not do it in their own strength. So they immediately started praying for power and strength. They were just ordinary people who would be able to do extraordinary things because the Spirit of God was at work within them. They were just ordinary people who would be able to do extraordinary things because the Spirit of God is at work within them. Now, here we are, 2,000 years later, in a similar predicament. As followers of Jesus, his commission applies to each of us as well. We are to be his witnesses, sharing his love with others, to help build the kingdom, awaiting Christ's return. And we still have no strategic plan, not biblically. Sure, others have gone before us. They've created their own journeys, but their plan and journey is not ours. Like those first followers, Jesus wants us to rely on him through the power of the Holy Spirit. He wants us to pray, to seek his guidance, to seek his power, to seek the Holy Spirit, our comforter, our power. In him we find strength, courage, boldness, confidence, insight, ability, and authority. Jesus called his followers to go in all the world, and as a result of that commission, here we are, 2,000 years later, Jesus' followers in Mount Pearl, Newfoundland. And he's calling us to do the same thing today through the power of the Holy Spirit. He has given us what we need to fulfill the mission. We just need to seek it, to ask for it, to pray. We all have a mission and it will look different for each one of us. For some, it's full-time ministry, being open to wherever God leads. For others, it's local ministry here at the core, extending Jesus' love and story through leading others. Still for others, it's community engagement, being involved in our community outreach to share Jesus' light and love with others. And for some, it may be as simple as making a meal or some muffins and sharing with a neighbor in need. Yet what, we only do whatever in Jesus' strength and power. And how do we discover what Jesus wants us to do and how to do it? We pray. Jesus could have sent them out the door as soon as he ascended. Go, now. 
I'm sure the adrenaline was flowing and they were pumped. They had just seen Jesus rise in the clouds. But Jesus gave them clear instructions. Wait. Wait. Wait on me. Wait for the Spirit. So if they had to wait, they were not going to sit by idly. They prayed, seeking God's guidance and waiting for the Spirit. This morning, God is calling us to pray. Pray. Pray for his guidance. We do not need a strategic plan for mission. We need to be available to God's guidance and leading of the Holy Spirit. We need not wait for the Spirit. He is here among us. We just need to allow him to use us, seeking boldness, courage, confidence, insight, ability, and authority. I have a question for us this morning, myself included. When was the last time we prayed? This prayer. God, I'm available to you. Lead me. Reveal your mission for my life. May I be your humble servant. This morning I invite you to come. To come as an act of commitment and dedication. To come and pray. Pray as the early church prayed. Pray alone. Pray together. Pray corporately. Pray that God will guide us in his mission in our beautiful city of Mount Pearl. There was a great task before the disciples. They prayed. There's a great task before us this morning. We need to pray. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your life on earth, for your life and death and resurrection and what that means to us, the promise of life with you forever. But until that moment comes, God, you've given us a task. You want us to share your light and love with others. Sometimes we feel that's very daunting, but we know we never do it alone. We do it in your strength and in your power. In these next moments, Holy Spirit, rain down upon us. Speak to hearts. Convict us where we need to be convicted. Direct us where we need to be directed. But more, no, more importantly, I pray that we will be open to what you ask. Praying these things in thy name. Amen. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He is here. Holy, holy. I will bless his name again. He is here. Listen closely. Now, sometimes when we sing this course, we think of it as a, a salvation course. But this morning, think of it as a course of dedication. He is here. Hear him calling out your name. What is he asking of you today? You, he's here. You can touch him. And when you're blessed with the Holy Spirit, you will never be the same. I invite you to come. Come this morning and pray. Pray for God's leading in our lives today. He is here,
Father of mercy and grace, thou art welcome in this place. And sometimes when we sing this chorus, we think about this place as this room, this building. But think about it this morning as your heart, your body, your soul. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in my life this morning. Show me your power. Show me your boldness. Show me your courage that I can do the Great Commission. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. be open, God, to what you ask of me today. Move in my life.
song this morning is 573 in our song book. It's a beautiful song, beautiful words. And as we get ready to leave here this morning, it says, Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Be all else, but not to me, save that thou art. Be thou my best thought in day and the night, both waking and sleeping. Thy presence, my light. Be thou my wisdom. Be thou my true word. Be thou my breastplate, my sword for the fight. Be thou my old armor. Be thou my true might. Fifth verse says, High King of heaven, thou heaven's bright sun, O oh, grant me his joys. After victory is won, great heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be thou my vision, O oh, ruler of of all five verses straight through with the help of the band, please. <laughs> benediction this morning is 1041 this this is the God we adore our faithful unchangeable friend whose love is as great as his power and knows neither measure nor end Tis Jesus the first and the last whose spirit 
shall guide us safe home. We'll praise him for all that is to pass and trust him in the week that's to come. Remember the announcements for this coming week and uh, be in prayer this week, especially for those whom names we listed today and those on our hearts, those unspoken requests and those we know because we know prayer is powerful and we take them to the throne of God. Let's pray. Father, this morning, we thank you for this blessing, this blessing of worship, this blessing of hearing from your word this morning. And as we leave, and as we go out and be the church, may you guide us, guide our steps, guide our words, our conversations. May we be light and love to all those we meet this week. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you.